Happy Thursday, guys. Happy Thursday. Happy Thursday. We are almost through the first week of the month of September, which is awesome. We made it through another week. <laughs> come on in, guys. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Good, good, good. We're going to let people come in for a little bit longer. And before we start, I kind of want to go through the screen, okay? So, oh, obviously, I'm Jeff Howard. Welcome, 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 guys. I, Sarah is on a well-deserved vacation in Colorado, actually, this week. So she has asked me to come in and be the thorn amongst these beautiful roses that are around me. And so I'm going to be kind of doing the moderating a little bit. Um, but I want to welcome you guys tonight. Let's talk about Zoom real quick. I want you to look at that bottom corner, and right now it says muted. You guys are all muted because, if, unfortunately, if you're not, it gets kind of crazy. We have stop video, which you can stop your video. So let's say Laura Adam gets up and she has no clothes on. She can just stop the video and we don't have to see anything. Or if, or if Abby's husband walks in again, we can stop the video. We have security, which is Mike, means if somebody gets out of control. The participants are below that. And we have about 250 signed up, but they always come in late. But what I care about mostly is the one right next to it, the chat. I want you to click on the chat button and it should come to your side. It should come to your side, guys. All right, and this is where I want you guys to type in your names and where you're from, and this is if you have any questions. The panel will always be looking at the side and be able to answer that as well. This has also been recorded, so you'll be able to refer back to it as well at a later date. Um, good, 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 good. Okay, so that's kind of it. Everybody's got, hey, Laura Adams. Hello, Jennifer. All right, good. Good, good, good. Love it. Ooh, love, it love it, love it, love it. Look at them coming through. That's so good. Good. Come on in, guys. Come on in. Come on in. Chicago land. I love that. All right. Well, we're going to start, guys. Tonight is exciting because it's something that we're all having to kind of dive in together with. And I feel that on my panel, I have the best of the best. And I'm going to introduce them to you so you know who we're talking about. Next, we've got Abby Apple. Abby, wave. She is the owner and CEO of Abby Fit Consulting, uh, uh, Apple Programming Solutions, and the Program Director of Fit Space Studios. We have Christy, Christine Conti. Raise your hand, Christine. She is the CEO of Conti Fitness and Wellness LLC and, and, and New Jersey's Fitness Director for Orange Theory Fitness. We have Jessica Murray. Did I do that okay, Jessica? Mauer like power. Mauer like power. Dang it. And she is the social media and online manager for several top and well-known fitness personalities and brands. And then, of course, we have Ann Gilbert. There's Annie. And she's the owner and operator of two shape fitnesses for women franchises in the Tampa Bay area. Annie oversees the operations of over 50 group fitness professionals and 25 certified personal trainers and coordinators, fee-based group personal trainers programs. And I'm Jeff, and I'm in Louisville, Kentucky, and I'm in charge of this and that, no big deal, no big deal, I don't care about me. All right, question. If you're on screen, raise your hand if your gyms are open right now. Even you guys, my panel, even my panel, show me, show me, show me. Okay, good, 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 okay. Um, <laughs> you guys, don't worry about the pan if you're open or not right yet, okay? Um, I know Abby, myself, and Annie have been open for a while and it wasn't quite what we thought it was going to be, was it, guys? We thought we were going to get stampeded with all of these people coming back, but it just didn't happen like we thought it was. What do you think, Ann? I think the day that they told us we could open, it was like a honeymoon. And we did. We thought everyone was going to come running in the door. And we didn't have that response. And we were still dealing with fear and cancellations and requests for freezing, which kills our business. So uh, after the honeymoon, there was a little bit of a decline and a little bit of dissolution. Wouldn't you guys agree? A little dissolutionment going on. So that's when we did the first, what you call Jeff, pivot, right? Yeah. Into, into really scrambling to try to figure out how to keep the members engaged that weren't coming back. And I did. I thought they'd all come. How foolish, right? Like yeah. I thought I could run my business on energy alone. And we found out a lot since we've been business owners, right? But a little bit of disillusionment, but then constant work, heavy, heavy duty work to get the people to stay engaged. Perfect, perfect. And Abby, how about you? What was your experience when you guys opened? Um, well, I work at a couple of facilities and um, uh, to be honest with one of the facilities, we did not expect a lot of people. 
We absolutely did not expect that. We knew uh, based on the cancellations that they had for, because we were closed for a couple of months. So based on those camp cancellations, we just assumed that if we, we were lucky to get 30% of the people, the original membership. So, and, and they might, they, one of the facilities might even be lower than that. Um, the facility that is still doing well is a small group training studio. Um, and the reason they're doing well, and they still have, they still maintain their membership is because they chose to do virtual classes, like within a week of shutting down, within one week, they were up and running with classes. And they had a few, they had some cancellations, they had, or not cancellations, but people that put their membership on hold, but they were the ones, they were the ones that um, were able to, when we when everything opened back up, they were able to keep most of their classes on the schedule because the other place, I mean, they dropped to what, 30% of their classes, if that, and this place was able to keep, I'd say over half, maybe closer to like 75% of their classes and they're still adding more um, and wow. doing special events every week. So they were, because they did virtual and they did a virtual class, I believe every single day, you know, at a time that people weren't working like 11 a.m. in the morning, like no one was getting up. Who was like, who was sleeping in every day? <laughs> You're like, hey, you got to teach at 11. I'm like, all right. It's like, roll out of bed, I'm there. Now I got to get up again. But yeah, so they were the ones that were successful because they did this virtually and they figured out how to do it, to do it well. Good, good. I know that Jessica's is going to be opening up hopefully soon. And same, Christine, you're opening up on Monday, I believe, right? Or something? In, I'm on the Jersey Shore for everyone that doesn't know that. So um, <laughs> we are just, we were just given the go ahead um, to open up at about 20% at most. But I'm going to um, throw it to Abby, what she just said about um, changing and going virtual immediately. We have a lot of facilities, a lot of gyms and boutiques on the Jersey Shore that have been thriving throughout this entire um, worldwide pandemic. And exactly that, the ones that said, all right, you know what, we're gonna put things online, we're gonna go with a regular schedule, and you know what, we're gonna record videos, we're gonna put them out, we're gonna have a video library, we're going to um, have classes at different times. A lot of the members stayed and paid. And I guess for tonight, you know, we, we definitely want to give you our input, but we definitely want to give you some tips. I know um, Jessica and myself um, are both like the social media mavens, I guess, um, do a lot of panels and, you know, I have a podcasting company and a podcast. Um, so, you know, for a lot of people that are really struggling for, you know, in-person classes, this is a huge opportunity to get out there and put it on video do the zoom and like and you were like oh everyone's gonna show up well i don't know about you but there's actually places i chose not to go because i wasn't comfortable with a mother who was ill and also with young children to put myself in front of all those people not knowing yet exactly what's going on so i guess there's you know there's a lot of different dynamics out there that you know for us to hopefully help you with Great, great. Hey, so, yeah. I, I want to add something to what she's saying is so important to understand is when we made the switch and started adding a virtual schedule similar to what Abby was discussing, we had it ready, but we had to teach our members how to find it. Right. And I'm hoping that I'll learn from these guys, but we had the filming done within 12 hours too, Abs. We still used our st film in the studio so they'd see familiar faces and their, their master trainers and they'd see the backdrop that they missed and they'd feel connected. But we had to teach them so right. much on how to find us. We still have members, even after 12 weeks, who know that we have eight virtual classes a week in our clubs as well as a full schedule, but they still don't know how to find us. That was our biggest challenge. Are you guys finding that's a challenge? I think a lot of the places here, and we're in North Carolina, so we're still not open. They're finding that logistics of it is confusing. Like, how do you tell people where you're having your outdoor classes? Where are you having your virtual classes? Where are you having your recorded classes? That logistic and line through. And because each one of those categories fits different people in different target markets, you almost need a different way of of telling people about your brand, your brand of being outdoors and teaching, your brand of being virtual and live teaching on a screen and, and your brand of being recorded and having a database to go from. 
So the businesses that are really doing well right now in the world are the ones who are going after those specific ones as if they're different businesses. Because you're right, Anne, like logistically, it can be a nightmare to figure out where am I supposed to go? Who am I supposed to be? But if you know exactly who you're speaking to in your club and in your, in your community, you know how to get them where they need to go. Great, great. So I guess this is all going to be about just letting you know what we have used either to trial or error what has worked for us. Um, if you guys have not started streaming yet, you need to start streaming. Uh, but it's like anything else you do. The more you do it, the more comfortable you'll be with it. When the first time you do anything the first time, you're not very comfortable. I always bring up like a child. How many of you have had kids? When they start to walk, what happens? They fall. But then they get back up and what do they do? They keep trying. And it's going to be the same thing for you guys. You're not going to feel comfortable at first doing this if you haven't already, but you will get comfortable. And you have to remember this. You all have tribes that are looking for you and they want to see you and they want to follow you and they want to make sure you're okay. And they want to see your faces on Facebook or Zoom or whatever you decide. So before we dive in, the first thing is, what is the best platform to stream your classes on? And I know we all do different things here. So Abby, why don't you start with that one? And I, I was reading, I was reading Karen's um, message here. Say that question one more time, I'm sorry. Um, what is the Jeff. best platform to stream your classes? What, what well, do you I like use, to stream okay, on? Great question, I use Zoom. I mean, I do everything right now on Zoom. When I was working with the small group training facility, which I still work with them, um, but when we were doing the classes, they were live through Facebook and Instagram. Um, and there's always some, you know, little issues with music. We can, we're, I think we might be talking about that later. I'm probably getting ahead. Um, but right now I'm doing everything Zoom. I'm doing everything on Zoom. So um, I'm able to connect with the people that take my class. And, and I, most of the stuff I'm doing right now really is um, with fitness professionals. So we're talking instructors and trainers. Most of it's through Zoom and, and then I'm able to record it. So I'm able to record it and I'm able to sell the pre-recorded material along with any extra material that will help you know, supplement the workout and help and supplement the programming. So how do you get like, so like with what you guys got today, you're like this, we're doing a webinar, you saw the post, just like SCDW did, we're posting this, we're doing this. And then what did you get when you responded or entered, you gave them, they gave you the code how to enter the room. How do you do that, Abby, to finish up with so, the Zoom thing? How do you get so the when message I, to them? Yeah, so it, when you, um, so I have a Zoom account. So there's a couple different types of account. The account you, the account you have to have has to be account on an account that you pay for which I believe is, is pretty reasonable, like $14.99 um, a month. And if you think about it, if you're accepting payment, that should be you know, acceptable. Um, but it's $14.99 a month. And that allows you to send an invitation with the link to anybody who signed up for your class. Now, that's a whole different story. But anybody who's registered for your class, maybe they've emailed you, whatever it is, whether it's free or whether it's pay, you can send them the link and then they click on the link the day of the workshop or the class or whatever it is, and then they can join in. And the way that I do it right now is I don't, I don't, I probably shouldn't be saying this loudly, but I don't have a password. I don't, I keep it. It's not password protected, probably not the brightest idea, but I have so few people on there and I know who's, I know who's, who's signed up. I know every single person, you know, whether it's 20 to 60 people, I'm like, I know who they are. And I have the ability to check to see. So perfect. And what do you guys simple. use? We're using a pre-recorded digital TV station like an on-demand for our club. And again, it's a downgrade, it's a subscription in a sense, in which we've used initially as downgrading from a regular membership to save cancels and freezes. We also um, have used Zoom, um, but we use that mainly for social, to have a, a cocktail together with our members. Or we've done fashion shows every single month where vendors will come in and do a fitness fashion show. So we've done the fashion shows, we've had game nights, we've had cocktail hours, we've had fitness trivia nights with Zoom when we're really wanting to interact. Like we're interacting with all of you guys where we can see your questions and answer questions. But we do a pre-recorded digital TV station like an on-demand that's privately owned by our company right now. Uh, we're filming about 10 to 12 new videos to add to the library. Um, our biggest challenge was music initially and the confusion that goes along with music. But again, they are staged and I love to learn from everybody on the panel how to make that staging a little easier for us. But our members see their club. 
they miss their club, they miss the studio where they took their classes, and it's become pretty successful. We're actually seeing it as a revenue stream now, instead of just a way to save the cancel as it was in the beginning. Perfect. And Jessica, what about you? Um, I'm working with a couple of different places that have set up differently. One is a studio that wanted to create exactly what Anne was saying, like an, another income stream. They like saw this as an opportunity to reach those people who can't come to their usually scheduled classes. So they went with a company called Intellivideo, which allows for you to do live classes just like this on Zoom, but also allows for you to build those pre-recorded videos. So it's a place that houses all of your library in one place. Um, and people have a login, they log into your site. It's a monthly subscription base. It kind of took care of everything. However, it is quite an investment. So that really is a way for studios to be able to success be successful. But entrepreneurs and people who are working by themselves, you can build a digital portal where you're still using Zoom, but people are able to log into your website and then see the broadcast on Zoom or see the broadcast that you're putting on YouTube Live or Vimeo Live or whatever service that you're using. And all of it will be stored on their essentially user portal. So I think it really depends on how much time and effort you wanna put into it, how many resources you have, how, much, how complex you want it to be. You can really kind of take this and build multiple revenue streams from it based on live virtual classes versus on-demand classes. And then there are so many platforms that are out there right now who are reaching out towards fitness professionals, making it easier for you to be able to take your studio and put it online in a way that people are easy to access it. But I wanna say something real quick about that. You're gonna be hit by a lot of people. You've gotta make sure it's a good deal for you. Yes. You're gonna take the headache away from you, but you're gonna get a lot of stuff on your social media, whether it be Instagram or Facebook, and they're gonna be like this, hey, we want to help you build a program. We want to give you a phone, da 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 da. You guys, no. You have to do what's comfortable for you. And for me, if it's a 50-50 split, whether they collect $10 and they give you five and they keep five, but they kind of take care of all of the headache for you, that's fine. But I want you to be very, very, very careful because on my panel, have you not been hit by people that are like, Oh, I can help you grow your business. That if they want, if they ever ask you for money, you say no. <laughs> you no, no you don't need to do that. Always take a tour because it might have things that you don't need, and because it's not in your level of where you are in business, and it might be over the top, and you just need something much simpler. So always take a tour. And Christine, what about you? All right. So I'm going to tell everyone. I'm going to walk through a couple things that that I do, and then I'll put my I'll put my email. If, if there's anything I mention that you you know want to hear, or um, I'll try and put some of this in the notes. But um, I guess one of the things that I want to go into is that um, both working with clubs. I know everything shut down in New Jersey. So one of the things that I did, just like a lot of you, is that I started putting classes on online so i set my own schedule so on my website what i did was i said all right let's build a monthly membership i'm going to do live classes monday wednesday friday this was totally not with the gym this was just with conti fit right so i have a video library on my website so what i would do is i would set up my computer one of them would be a face my phone would be a facebook live the computer would be uh, just recording um, someone else would be on um, Facebook, yeah, Facebook, Instagram, and a video recording. My video recording, I would then upload to Vimeo. I would also put that on my YouTube page, and I would put all the recordings in a exercise library. So now every person who wanted to do a live workout or they just wanted workouts in perpetuity could have access to that. So there's kind of like a you know an extra income. Um, as it's going through. The other thing I wanted to mention, and I wrote it down for myself, is that once you make these videos, if you wanna go to a platform, like Jeff was saying, where there's kind of a revenue split, um, platforms like Burn Along, platforms like FitFix, um, there's so many of them out there that if you have these videos, I know that you know people get kind of weird about putting their stuff out and you know taking, not getting paid for it, but if, you put a lot of your um, videos out on different platforms, you're going to start to see a residual. You will get deposits in your bank account because a lot of people either buy these off of other platforms or they're taking classes and you get a kickback from it. Um, I just think that's super important at this point because of all the different um, platforms, like Jessica was saying, and Abby, um, 
try not to put those side blinders on and say, I just want you know, these people for me, or I don't want to share my classes, the more platforms that you can be on, the better. You know, if someone can search your name, that SEO, that search engine optimization, and your name pops up in the first five, they're not only going to find your name, but they're going to find, oh, she works out, or, oh, look, Abby's teaching a certification. When I teach certifications, I use Zoom um, for the most part. I know Facebook is coming up with a platform to try and be in competition with them right now, um, you know, Google Meets. But for the most part, Zoom has been very good to the fitness professional, I have to say. Um, and again, just, you know, watch out your, your copyrights. Watch out with your music and whatnot. But other than that, um, I'll try and write some of this in the notes but get it out there, get the videos done and spread your wings. And I know some of you are thinking that, well, that's easy for us to say because you think that we know more or whatever. It's not, you guys, mm -mm. they're looking for content. It, I don't want you to, every time you think of a no, I want you to think, no, that's not correct. They want to hear what you're going to say. They want to see content. They're looking for it. So don't think that what you're doing isn't valuable because you all are valuable and people are looking for new stuff to do automatically. Okay. Shake your heads, please. Yes. Okay. You're valuable. They want stuff. The only reason we're even on the panel is just because we've banged our heads. We've all said this prior to coming on guys, your Wi-Fi. you've got to make sure if you do, if your Wi-Fi is not strong, you have to re-record it. Just like Christine said, it's easier to re-record it and then put it out there on a steady Wi-Fi. I, Annie and I were talking, I did a certification at Ann's club almost golly two a year and a half ago and we didn't have wi-fi and, and the tech that was there had to put it on his phone we had to like hotspot that sucker so the wi-fi you have to have a strong signal and even for us when we started doing scws right away you know sarah pivoted better than anybody i know she pivoted and had that mania up and going virtual but as presenters we all had to figure out our wi-fi's and we had to buy things for me the google nest has been my saving grace and what it is, it's the easiest thing to install. Whatever Wi-Fi you have, you just plug it in, you put them in your house, and you'll have, I can teach from my driveway, and I still have Wi-Fi, okay? So for me, it's a no-brainer. It's Google Nest. You can get it on eBay or Amazon. There's always coupons for it, okay? Um, screen frozen. Am I frozen? I'm not frozen. No. No. All right. No. All right. Anyway, so... My quick thing for me is I'm not technologically like these guys. I started streaming. We shut down on a Wednesday. I streamed that Friday. You guys, I was doing Facebook Live. Facebook Live, I was doing it five days a week. Some of you have seen me. My views, I was at 5,000 views, 6,000 views, but I was giving it away. I was doing it for free. Shame on me, but I was causing a habit. And then I realized, oh my gosh, I need to get paid for this. And so what you're going to do, guys, when you do do your Zooms or your lives, if you're not getting paid for it right up front, you're going to thank them for a donation. Thanks, you guys, for the donation. I really appreciate it. It's really helped me through this. Even if they haven't given you a donation, you've just planted a seed that, oh, I'm supposed to give him something or I'm supposed to do this. And you let them know it's okay. For some reason, as Group X teachers, we, we, we hate to ask for money. And I don't know what that's about. Even when we teach our classes, the average pay structure is $17 an hour. Why is that? It shouldn't be like that. So I need you guys, they, our members think we're being taken care of by our gyms. And you all know we haven't been, okay? And our tribes, you, it's okay to let them know a donation isn't gonna hurt. You guys, I get $300, $400 out of donations a day just by saying it, okay? They wanna take care of us. So I want you guys to feel comfortable with this, okay? I do Facebook Live. I don't do Zoom. I'm old school. I just do Facebook Live to the point now I have a subscription and it's a private group on Facebook Live. And it's $29.95 and I have 300 people paying me that every month. Okay, shake your heads. And I'm just like what Christine and everybody said. I record everything I teach. Everything I do. If you do Facebook Live, all you do is save it on that device. There's a button that says save. You save it on the device so you have it. So now you have live and guess what? The video. Our clubs are open. What I do, I take my, vid my phone or my iPad and I put it on the mirror. Attachment, mirror. And I video it while I'm teaching it. So I'm getting paid for my club and I'm recording it and I'm going live. When Christine said about all the venues and platforms you can go on, that's how you're utilizing it, guys. 
I need you to start working smart and not breaking down your bodies. When our club opened back up in Louisville, they wanted me to teach 27 classes a week. And then they wanted me to add five more to that the next week. And physically, I couldn't do it. I physically could not do that. And so I had to have a talk with them. I can't do this. My body won't allow it, especially with the amount of time we had off, okay? So I want you guys to start working smart, okay? Um, and that turns on to how can you turn your streaming into actual profits? Who wants to hit that one first? Jess? Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think it's coming back to realizing that we live in a different world. The world that we used to live in where people could come to your club at 6 a.m. is gone. The world where the 9 a.m. class was the biggest because you had all the people dropping off their kids and coming straight to your class, like that's not around right now. So if you want to make revenue, you've got to remember that everyone's life right now is chaotic and they don't have the same schedule that they used to. So if your moms can't come at nine, but they can do a pre-recorded or they can do a virtual, they can hop into different revenue streams based on membership. So they can still pay memberships to you, but maybe they only want pre-recorded videos. They only want your library or they want to actually interact with you and actually have an instructor and see change your price point based on how much energy your instructor is giving. If it's pre-recorded and my big response to the fitness industry is we need to reuse, recycle and reduce how much work and effort you're putting into things. So record everything you put live because you can turn around and put that into your library, beef your library up and sell that as your on-demand service. Remember that these times that we used to be of like an hour class at nine o'clock was the biggest or at noon or at 5 p.m. Like that's not the way that people live anymore. Instead, they're looking for 15 minute fixes. They're looking for 30 minute half hour power classes. They're looking for things they can do with in their tiny apartment or while their kids are at school that doesn't require them going anywhere, doing anything, and they can be in their pajamas. So serve those people, give them multiple options, make it short, make it sweet, give them their, what they're used to, and then play in with a lot of other variations that they can do. Just think of it as new revenue streams answering the problems of what people are dealing with right now. Christine? I would, one of the biggest things I have to say right now, and I work with a lot of um, special populations. So people that have Parkinson's and MS and Alzheimer's, um, many people that, you know, are not gonna be the people that are going to come back and come out. Um, and I think it's a time where you can sit and say, all right, you know, instead of, you know, wow, things are so different, what was me? It's, this is exciting. What other people can I reach that maybe can't leave their house or shouldn't? And that's the thing I want everyone to be aware of. Like this, this is not that, it shouldn't be crippling. This is a, okay, well, now what? Now, now who can I reach? Um, you know, now that we're putting ourselves out on different platforms, well, hey, um, I would love to do a little bit more mindfulness. You, you could do that in your house. You could do a 15 minute relaxation or a yoga, or, you know, I work with arthritis populations or whatnot. Get out there and start making videos, recording them and see who else you can reach. That, that's the other thing. Put questions out on social media. Um, I'm gonna throw this out here. Social media, you need to have your Facebook, your Instagram, get something up on LinkedIn, uh, make a nice profile, uh, make sure, you know, if you're a, a Twitter person, great, um, but you've got to be present and tell people, sing it, give them little clips of, hey, I'm doing this, or I'm going to do a Zoom, but does anyone want to, you know, be a part of it? Um, I think that it's time to really explore some, some things outside the box. Um, and that's what I would say with, you know, throwing different things on different platforms. You know, one company I work with is, is like with the VA. Another company is more with mindfulness. It, you know, there's, there's a place for you, but you've got to be open to it. Love that. Annie, what about you guys? I really feel as though you guys have to realize you're very sought after right now. And in the last three months, my eyes have been opened. We are now working every single week. We're doing little virtual, like you said, little snippets. People like the 15 minute snippet before chamber meetings, guys. We're doing the early morning workouts for the school board, people that aren't coming back to the facilities. So we're not just teaching in our brick and mortar. We have now taken that little bit of recording that we started 
because we were scared that we were losing our initial business and we're expanding. I work for the TV station in Tampa every week. They are now doing early morning little snippets from shapes and getting that information out there and getting our little trial workouts out there. The shorter, the better. Like you said, I totally agree with you. The shorter, the better is putting us out into the community like never before. If the world turns around, those people are going to walk in my doors and buy some type of program. We don't sell memberships, but some type of program. Until then, we're getting out to them. So every vendor, every community um, awareness partner that we have, that we've established over the years, now we are doing virtual classes for small and then snippets. We call them snippets. Awesome. And how about you, Abby? Uh, well, I'm on a couple different platforms, more than I'm on three different platforms. And the reason I say that is because my wheelhouse really is fitness professionals. I think a lot of people that are on that are in this on this call probably know that. And I spend most of my life on the road on the weekends. So I only teach three days a week and I teach like live before COVID, maybe six classes a week. So um, with regards to the consumer, not saying I don't, I use my consumers kind of as my laboratory for what I'm teaching on the road to fitness professionals to make sure that it works. Cause you can't, I have to be, to be authentic. You have to make sure that it works, you know, with real people. Um, so I'm, I'm on right now two, I'd say more consumer platforms and one that's my own, which is the stuff that I sell, you know, that I sell through zoom and I promote it all on Instagram. And as I said before, I do live where I get a few people and it's, you know, my time is one o'clock. The time that I do, this is like one o'clock on a Wednesday. So one o'clock East coast time. So how many people can really make one o'clock East coast time? It really depends. It depends on if you're open, if you're not open, if you're working, if you have kids. So of course, um, I have that live and we get a few people, but it's amazing how many people want the pre-recorded um, version of that. And when I give people, instead of just giving people a class, because as I said before, I know my wheelhouse is, I give people programming. I give them programming ideas so that they can teach. So you guys who are here, like listening to us right now, I give you ideas on what you can teach to your people on Zoom and Facebook Live and Instagram. So I'm giving you more, you know, more ideas. So I know what my wheelhouse is and I know, you know, what my strengths are. So I'm trying to capitalize on that while still expanding my consumer reach. Cause you still need to, for me, that's, it's still important. Great. So everybody's kind of hit on the hour thing and whatever you guys, they don't want any longer than 45 minutes. An hour class is gone, 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 gone. They want 45 minutes or less. Yes, Abby. Can I say one thing, Jeff? Yeah. Yep. So, so um, I'm on another, I'm on a, like, an, I'm on an organize, I'm, I work with another organization and, um, and they have one of the people um, on the panel or on this, you know, on this committee has a huge hold on the consumer and has done amazing work virtually. And they found, and I, they found that the average consumer right now watching virtual their average consumer, and it's a huge company, huge company throughout the United States. They found that the average consumer wants to work out online on average, ready for this, 19 to 29 minutes. Wow. I heard Did you all hear that? Mm -hmm. 19 to 29 minutes. So when you say 45 minutes, that is really reaching. Like they want to work out and that's, and that's what their average is. They're, they said that the members are staying on 19 to 29 minutes. Like, and then you got to yeah. remember, and you got to remember this guys as well. You know, the number one piece of machinery in the world is Peloton. And what did we learn from that? We learned that they want the ride some live, but they also want a pre-recorded workout when they can have it. So we have to look at stuff like that. And you guys, this virtual thing was going to happen regardless. We just were forced to do it. A lot of clubs were looking at doing a virtual, class schedule along with the membership prior. This just pushed our hands, okay? So I, want, I don't wanna be afraid of it. And the other thing now, so this is kinda of like, how do I get the money, right? You're like, how do I get the money? How do I get it? Easy, you're gonna post your Venmo, your PayPal. You're gonna say point blank, if you like what I'm doing, it's $10, this is the way it is. If you're doing Zoom, you give them then how you wanna receive your money, okay? You've gotta let them know how to get the money to you, because that's, we're all hit on how to make profit, but none of us said, how do we give you the, how do we get our money, right? And that's how you're gonna do it, guys, okay? You're just gonna post it and ask for it. Do you guys agree with that? 
yeah, I definitely think PayPal, Venmo, you know, Apple Pay is an easy way to do it as well. Um, and if you have a website or you have a studio, you have a way for people to access a, a payment portal on your site. There's great ways that you can add donate now buttons to your website, which is going to make sure that the donation comes to you and doesn't actually end up in like the sales cycle of Visa and MasterCard and all of the processes. So if you have access to a website that your studio already provides for you, or Gemma already provides, you can always add in additional ways for them to pay you. Perfect, perfect. Our next topic, um, what are the options for streaming classes as a club owner and manager? And the thing is, guys, a lot of our club owners were fearful of us as teachers streaming classes when we reopened because they were afraid that people wouldn't come back. And Annie, do you want to touch that? Because I know you guys had talked about that, but it, you found a different response. And everybody, please, I'd love to hear your opinion on it. You know, um, I had a couple of my head coaches. I have two facilities right now. And I had a couple of the head coaches that meet, to, meet together in what we call the task force have that concern. They're not going to come back if they can stay at home. Um, we've proven them wrong, um, that people liked, immediately liked the fact that we gave them the same type of schedule. And we now have about 40% of our classes on virtual, um, as well as the regular, um, the regular in-house classes. It was a fear. We thought, well, they can get something for free, um, or they can get something that they have to pay a donation. But uh, they quickly, quickly, when we started showing them the data and the engagement numbers, realized that it was really them and the club that they missed. And we were working very well with both of them together. But there was a fear in the beginning. Yes. Anybody else? Panel? I think, I think it's really important to remember that your business is a, is a highway system where people can come in and out when they want and how they want. And if you treat it that way as a club, knowing that some people are going to come in on the first exit and some people are going to leave immediately after, while other people are going to travel on your highway system for a long period of time. We want client retention, but client retention doesn't necessarily mean that we're serving the clients in the exact same way. You're going to have people, like Ann said, who are dying to get back in. Like They're the ones beating down the doors and are excited and are that 30% that are currently in. You'll have the other ones who are going to be a little bit late coming to the party or just prefer to stay at home. And as long as I love the idea of a task force, like coming mm -hmm. together and having a way that you can have open dialogue with your employer and with your employees and decide on who's not comfortable coming back, who is comfortable coming back and how can you guys work together? Maybe it's something where the ones who are not coming back in your virtual classes are those short little snippets and your live classes are the full experience, but figuring out a way that you can tag team it together. But remembering that just because they're not taking one avenue into your business doesn't mean that they can't take other ways into your business. And I think when you really teach your, retrain your staff, if you were working on, the, on a team of people, that there's numbers that can be assessed after a couple of weeks and really look at the engagement in the classes, the fear goes away and they realize that we're not going back to 2019. That was a hard one for me. I've been in the business a long time and I always lived on what was happening in the past and you really have to you really have to just continue to show everybody on your staff or everybody that you're working with the amount of engagement that's happening for instance we had a yoga class when we opened it was a very very popular just a regular yoga flow class in the club in riverview florida um, we only had four people coming back to that class and after social distancing and putting the little logos on the floor we had room for 16 it went from 35 to four and the teacher said i'm going to lose my job because it's she always thought that she was graded on the number of people that showed up we put her on virtual we put her on facebook live the following week and she has 89 regulars on a private facebook page so we know the data is the shapes member watching right so now she feels very very confident and now she's really excited about making us more accessible to that active ager going forward perfect so you guys believe it or not we're almost down to five six minutes left so let's hit some points <laughs> all right music people are asking about music um you guys a lot of the companies have re have made music for us and it's called live streaming okay and it's so much better than it used to be if you go to yesco power music any of the companies even if you go on itunes and you push in live streaming music it will have music that is designed for us okay it doesn't have um the 
the keywords we might know or the, or the original artist, but it definitely has songs that work, and it's not like it used to be. Um, a lot of us on this panel have shot videos in the past where we had to use music that was maybe designed for videos, and it was terrible. It's not like it anymore. <laughs> it's definitely better. Um, and, they're reducing, and they're putting it out all the time, guys. Now, be very, very careful, though. If you do use music that is from the artist or from, even if it's Yes Go and it's the top 40 and you play it, guys, they're going to flag it, okay? And they're going to pull it from you and the word's going to be taken away. Even your cool downs. So I want you to be very, very aware of that, okay? Um, they were very lax. When it first happened, guys, they, nobody was like honest about it. I was able to get away with a lot, but now they're catching us again. So be very, very aware of it, okay? Um, I think people are typing in what they like to use music-wise, but I know that there's music designed for us, and it's live streaming music. Do you, anybody want to add to that? R royalty free. It's got to right. be royalty free. free. Right. It's got to right. be royalty free. So there's a ton of companies out there royalty free. Yeah, I see a few people writing this in, and it says royalty free. There's a, um, the company that I use is um, is Movia. I love I love them. They don't pay me, by the way, to use their music. So I'm just going to put it in there. But they they definitely do. Yeah, Movia. They do, um, did I just spell that wrong? Yeah. Royalty. Yeah, no, sorry, Christine music. just put it in. Good, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and then, and then there's a lot of people that are asking about waivers and, and, and that part of it. Michael, can you put in this the waivers that we normally put in? Sarah put in waivers for us that we can use, but you have to have two separate waivers. You have to have one regarding the workout and one rego regarding COVID. It can't be under the same waiver. It has to be two separate waivers. And Sarah's husband is a lawyer, as is Sarah. So if she says this is what we're supposed to do, I always go with what she says legally. <laughs> but that's what, it, I mean, and, and Michael will put them, he'll put them on the feed and they will be on This Is Being Recorded. I will link in the webinar archive tomorrow. So you guys come back tomorrow, you'll get a follow-up and it's gonna have the documents you need. When I train people, I have them always sign. I do a parking, I do a, a, a workout in the parking lot every Saturday. Listen to this, guys. It's called Power Sculpt on the Lot. And I go to different places throughout the city and I ask them if I can use the parking lot. I'm getting 50 people, which shows Group X is happening. They want to see each other, but we're outside. And a parking space is six feet. I got that from Annie because Annie did that in her parking lot. You guys, $10. How much am I making with 50 people there? 45-minute class. And I'm recording it and going live. So I'm just saying you got to think outside the box. Um, Anybody want to add something? Yeah, let me, I, there's a question in here about music and all the, because I know Zoom, a lot of this stuff can be really technical and really quickly, just for Zoom, this is what you want to do when you're looking at the volume and the, just the sound mm -hmm. of everything. Make sure that when you get on, you, you, when you start a meet, I would suggest do a practice meeting. Do many practice meetings. Get a friend on the other end of the meeting and then start playing with all of the buttons and pl do that with your friend and say, can you hear me? How's the volume? Do I need this louder? And then you go down to the audio settings and you can play with the audio settings on there. So there's audio settings. You can change um, the device you're using. So do have practice meetings, have multiple, even today. And I've been doing this now since I said the first, w before COVID we were doing this. Even today I go on and every once in a while I go, I go to share music. And for some reason it did not share the music. And somebody on the other end is like, I don't hear it. All right. I'm like, well, let me start over. Try it again. So there's always little mistakes that you can make. P do a practice meeting. Do multiple practice meetings with Zoom or even Facebook Live or whatever you have to do. Just practice before you get there. Just to be honest with you, people are less patient today with the technological issues than they were three months ago. Mm -hmm. Anybody noticing that? They're like, I mean, yes. I taught a class recently where we, the music was too loud and I, I used a new app. Oh my gosh. And I couldn't figure out how to get the volume to go down. And I lost, like, people are like, I'm out. Like they were just gone. These are consumers. Bye. I was like, ah, I'm like, bye Felicia. So anyway, they came before, back. Next so week. not to anyway. cut you off. So we've got about 30 yeah. seconds, but I want you to yes. notice right now, if you look across the board, no mics, no mics. Abby has on her pods. The other girls don't, you guys, here's the deal iPhones, iPads, they have the technology. All of us are using them right now with you guys. So use your iPhone, use your iPad. Don't get caught up on the technology. When I do Facebook, I don't even get mic'd. I put the boom box by me and I teach my class. Why? It all picks it up as background noise, okay? They're picking it up as background noise. 
we have to go guys i want to thank you guys this will be all available to you does anybody i would love what's your closing thought abby quickly closing okay closing so you want to do that? no go somebody else go i'm just putting a couple any closing thought i just love the idea of practice you guys it's really really important it's really really important and don't concern yourself so much with technology but the music is important if you're going to push record or profit music is important so keep investigating and keep educating yourself. Good luck, everybody. And Jessica, what is your closing? Anything? Yeah, go simple. Start really simple, super basic. Don't get all crazy about what you have to have. Turn on the device and go. Christine? Life is about relationships and networking. All right, so you've got to get yourself out there. Dare yourself to say yes and get in front of as many people as humanly possible. And all I'm going to say is be safe, guys. Be safe. If you don't feel comfortable doing it, I don't want you to go back. Be safe. We love you guys, all right? See you guys. Thank you. Have a good night.